Rampardos has been revived once again with the Indigo Disc DLC, and this thing is an insane glass cannon. It has a massive base 165 attack, and paired with stab 150 powered head smash, there's not a lot that wants to deal with it. To cover for mediocre speed, we can run the Choice Scarf item to boost it by 50%, and Rampardos can also choose between two solid abilities. Mold Breaker can be used to ignore the effects of opponent's abilities, meaning it can hit levitating Pokemon with Earthquake. Sheer Force boost moves that have secondary effects like Rock Slide by 30% at the cost of negating those effects. Rampardos can function as a super fun nuke button, and while it doesn't stick around for a long time, it can easily punch holes in opposing teams. Alright, look, I've just always really liked fossil Pokemon. The thought of bringing a guy back to life from a rock, and then beating people up with it, it's pretty cool. Rampardos has always been a pretty underrated Pokemon, but that's what I'm here for. If you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. I promise you will not regret it, and let's go ahead and jump into the match. Alright, so my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Cleaver. This thing comes out looking sharp, ready to do some chomping, and I just toss out the Frost Slash. I'm pretty much just here to mess around, throw some spikes, and just kind of overall actually be annoying. So, it's pretty obvious that this thing, turn one, wants to go for the Stone Axe. It does super effective damage and also sets up some Stealth Rock, so I just decide to lay down a layer of spikes. I know that I have a Focus Sash, I can definitely live one of them, and I don't really have a whole lot that wants to switch in to a Stone Axe. So, we go ahead and get our heads chopped off, however, we do just hang on by a thread because I do have that sash, and we actually get the cursed body to activate. It's a 30% chance, and that's actually really nice because now they're going to be forced to go for something else, and a lot of the time you find Cleaver is going to be choiced. So I now decide to go for the Destiny Bond. I know that they're going to want to pick me off here, and I can basically trade Frostlass for the Cleaver. It turns out it actually has no moves left that it can use. Forced to go for the Struggle, which, you know, does take me out because... I'm literally at one, but they end up knocking themselves out in the process, and that's kind of just an interesting interaction there. They were probably running Choice Bam, seeing as I was still faster, and then <laughs> couldn't click anything else, and just went right for the struggle. So, struggles himself to death, and now we have a nice little empty battlefield. So, first of all, I'm thinking, I don't know what the hell they want to go into, but I do have myself a squid. Now, this thing is here to do some squid spinning. I can get a rapid spin off, get rid of those stealth rock, and then it's like Cleaver never happened. Even though the Frost Last didn't forget, we're going to try our best to forget about it. But the problem is, Superior is an absolute threat. I decide to go for the knockoff here, thinking they start to just boost themselves with that Leaf Storm, or potentially go for a defensive Terra, expecting the Sludge Bomb. I do want to assess the, the threat that this thing is immediately, but they instead go for the Substitute, lay down a Bean Bag, and I tell them to knock it off. I knock it off the shelf, however, it doesn't actually break the substitute. So that is not ideal. But the good news is Tentacruel is one of my best mons to handle this. We thick a store-bought gravy out here. I know that I can take special attacks at least until it starts to boost itself a bit too much with that Leaf Storm. So they do go for one and it does a nice little chunk. Um, but I can then fire off a nice little sludge bomb and that does take care of the substitute. So this thing is much less scary behind the sub. However, it's now setting up plus two special attack and it's looking like I can take at least one more of them. Um, and I don't really have any other option other than to let Tentacruel kind of just sponge out here. So I'm going to go for another Sludge Bomb here, and they are in fact going to commit the Terra. Now a lot of the time, you see these things running the Stellar Terra to get the extra boost on all of the moves once per match, but this thing's actually running Terra Fire, which is also a an extremely good option because it works better as a defensive Terra. They can now live a Sludge Bomb. It's got candles on his head, about to start a damn Forest Fire. But while Tentacruel may look like he's actually a Pokemon based off of a squid, he is in fact actually based off of a goat because I live it with 2 HP, which is insane. I then fire off a Sludge Bomb, and unfortunately, I don't do much damage without the super effective hit. And then I also just bring him down to lunchtime and give him a free Citrus Berry. So I'm like, damn, well, at least I was able to take one, and he's used up that Citrus Berry, and I do at least have some answers in the back. So... Sadly, I wasn't able to get off a Rapid Spin. I likely should have on the first turn here. But the Stealth Rocks, it's fine. We're, we're dealing with it. They then go for that Terra Blast and finish off the Tentacruel. So, listen to me very closely when I say Superior is one of the scariest things right now. It has all sorts of special attack boosts. It's naturally very speedy, and I have to figure out a plan here because this thing is scary. So, as it turns out, I'm going to end up bringing in the Rampardos. Now, the reason is... If it's a plus speed nature, max invested speed superior, it's sitting at a speed stat of 181. Now it also turns out Rampardos, with max speed, plus speed nature, with the Choice Scarf, also has a speed of 181. I'm gonna roll the dice for the speed tie, I actually end up winning it with the Earthquake, taking care of the superior, thanks to the fire typing, and down goes one of the biggest threats. So either we got lucky on a speed tie, or that thing was running 
uh, plus special attack nature. Regardless, Rampardos gets these old bones going quick as hell, and we're feeling pretty good about ourselves. So, with that thing out of the way, now they get a free revenge switch, and they decide to go into the Typhlosion, and considering they just saw my old dinosaur ass going quick as hell, that means that this is also going to be Choice Scarf, and they will be able to outspeed me. So what I'm going to end up doing is going into the Araquanid. I know that with my water bubble ability, I can take any attack, a fire attack this thing wants to throw at me. Plus, I just have naturally good special defense. It turns out they go for the Focus Blast. That means Buddy's got absolute balls of steel over here. Click in the Focus Mist. I actually end up getting the critical hit, but we're still pretty much fine. I'm at half. I know that I can get a Liquidation off. They probably don't want to stay in here if they are choiced, and they do end up switching that thing out. So it definitely means it's going to be a Scarf Typhlosion, which you know you do see like 90% of the time. So they decide to go into Lucario, the short king over here looking small as hell. I give him the Liquidation, and Araquanid is absolutely slept on with that water bubble damage. Boosting water moves, that is just easily going to take that thing out. Um, but the bad news is now we have to deal with this asshole again. He just comes and he says, surprise, bitch, I'm back with a different move option. And he can lock himself into whatever he wants. As this time, they actually go Eruption. And here's where my special defense paired with that water bubble is amazing because I'm able to take that. I can then fire off another Liquidation. And Araquanid is out here making stuff happen. Killing the one thing that can actually outspeed the Rampardos. So I'm feeling pretty good about a late game little dinosaur action. So... Now they're going to bring in the Hisuian Arcanine, but he probably should have done that earlier. Is uh, Honestly, though, most people, they do kind of sleep on the Araquanid. Taking that eruption was probably surprising, but they can then go for that head smash. That is, of course, going to smash the shit out of this bug. And now there's just bug guts all over the damn plaza out here. Someone's got to come out here and sweep this shit up, but this now opens the door to bring in my Rampardos, and I figure, hey, if we're smashing heads today, I figure I could get in you know, on the fun out here. So, Choice Scarf Rampardos is going to be able to outspeed, you know, both of the mons that they have left, barring any Choice Scarf users. So, I come in, break the mold for absolutely no reason, and I can just commit to the Head Smash here. Their final Pokemon is going to be the Hisuian Zorark. So, I go for that Head Smash, and I swear, this thing just is an absolute nuke button. With that attack stat and the nice little stab Head Smash, that is going to take care of the Arcanine. So, the final Pokemon is going to be the Zorark. Didn't actually get to pull any trickery today, comes in with his crazy ass tentacle hairdo and uh, it is going to be slower than Scarf Rand Pardos and check this out nobody wants to deal with this head today baby that's going to just knock that thing out uh, potential focus ash broken by the spikes and that is going to finish off the game so Rampardos has absolutely no brain cells left after all the recoil and bashing his head into stuff today but that's going to finish off the match and it does solidify the win so Scarf Dinosaur comes in extremely clutch, and it's also very fun to use. So fun, in fact, that we do have a battle number two out here. Let's get into it. So this time we have ourselves a little bit of a different squad. The one thing that remains the same, however, is that Rampardos is ready to lose some brain cells. So let's jump into the match. So what's kind of funny is that this guy is also working with the lead Cleaver, and I'm like, damn, I wish that I had the same Frostitude action going on here. But I do, in fact, have a guy with a straight-up shield on his face because we're just out here supporting the fossils today. And uh, you're not going to be able to break through this thing's head with the with the stone axe. So Cleaver, I imagine, probably doesn't want to stay in here. And yeah, this thing's just going to go ahead and pop a U-turn. So we don't have to deal with the stealth rock. I also give him a nice little parting gift in the form of a spiky helmet. So it takes a little bit of chip there. And now they can switch into whatever they like. And it turns out they're going to bring in the turtle. So there's a little bit of context clues around the match on kind of what this Blastoise is going to be working with. Either these things are going to be more of like a defensive... Um, kind of support option or their shell smash but considering they come in on an obvious stealth rock I'm thinking this is probably running rapid spin and not going to be more of an offensive one um, so I just decide to go into the Ndidi I know that I can take an attack from this thing if they do shell smash it's not going to be ideal for me but again I do expect kind of them to go for that rapid spin so I switch into the fresh baked croissants straight out of the oven and they do end up going for the surf here actually that's a nice little chunk however I do get up both my psychic terrain and now I have the opportunity to go for either an expanding force but I do have the coverage also with the energy ball and I do just want to ensure that I can get some damage here um, they have the dark type in the form of the incinero there but uh, they do stay in and they do rapid spin away the stealth rock so I figured that it's mostly fine now I'm just going to go for that expanding force I don't think they go into incinero here but if they do whatever expanding force just does so much damage to literally everything as it turns out they're going to end up bringing in the cleaver thinking i'm just going to continue to throw some balls of energy at him but instead buddy gets absolutely bopped by a mirror and uh, that is going to end up killing the cleaver so that's one of the big natural predators uh, for my croissant ears over here and cleaver being gone is actually really great because now they don't have 
access to the hazards really, and we're in a good spot. However, we're actually also in a bad spot being across the field from an Incineroar because I, I'm gonna take a Darkest Lariat to the face. However, before I die, I can end up knocking a little bit of damage here with that Dazzling Gleam. So the chip is nice because Incineroar is just overall pretty annoying. It can come in with Intimidates and just kind of dampen the team a bit here. So they do finish me off. I don't have much that wants to switch into this thing, but now what I can do is take advantage of kind of uh, the, the team synergy here in that I'm running Unburdened Sceptile holding the Psychic Seed. So, I come in and Psychic Seed gonna go off touching that terrain. It's not only gonna give me a special defense boost, but also activates my Unburden ability. So we are now faster than their entire team. And I know what you're thinking, why are you gonna bring in a Grass type against an Incineroar? Um, but that is because you, foolish commenter, did not think that I have the, the Terra Water. I have the defensive Terra on this Sceptile because that's gonna freely you know, allow me to set up a Swords Dance. I can put the Spout on my head and that is gonna open the door to be able to take a Flare Blitz nicely, but more importantly, now get the Swords Dance up. So Sceptile is actually in a great spot here. Being fast, I now have crazy attack and the Flare Blitz, while it does still do a massive chunk of damage, um, we are able to take it. And now we're really not afraid of a whole lot here with the Sceptile, especially uh, with the Psychic Terrain up, that's actually gonna block priority. So what I can do here is just finish off the Incineroar. It's, uh, I guess it could potentially have Sucker Punch, but I just go for the Earthquake here and down goes the Incineroar. So that is pretty damn good news. Again, annoying Pokemon out of the way. And Sceptile is looking like this might actually turn our ass into a Sceptile video. Um, they're actually, they get a free switch and they end up going into Lucario. So, first of all, I'm thinking Lucario has priority with extreme speed, but the terrain is going to block that. They do go for the extreme speed, and my guy is going to find out the hard way that the grape juice on the battlefield does in fact block that priority uh, and allows me to go for that earthquake. So, misplay on their end, uh, we're able to take advantage of, and the EQ finishes off Lucario. And this Sceptile is straight up dunking on some fools. But the one thing we cannot, in fact, slam dunk on is going to be the Latios. Because I don't have any Stealth Rock up. It looks like uh, a plus two Acrobatics does not quite end up knocking this thing out. It's a bulky ass, you know, Jet Dragon. I go for that Acrobatics. It just barely doesn't have enough damage. Allows them to finish me with a Luster Purge. And down goes my potential Sceptile Sweep. However, we were able to, you know, put some holes in the team and we're still feeling good about the positioning here. I got some great damage off on the Latios. The weirdness does disappear, but I do have one dinosaur with an egghead who is looking pretty nice about now. So I can go into the Rampardos, and with the Choice Scarf, I should be able to outspeed their team here. So the good thing about getting damage off on the Latios is that it makes Rampardos' life a whole lot easier because now a Head Smash obviously easily takes care of this thing. It doesn't end up knocking it out from full, so one of my goals in this late game was to be able to get some chip on the Latios. Turns out that chip resulted in almost it dying, but a head smash does take care of it, and luckily we don't take a lot of recoil from that. So we do still have at least three or four brain cells, and now they get a switch into the Sceptile. So their Sceptile is not going to be as quick as mine was, because Choice Scarf Rampardos is going to be able to outspeed the Sceptile. That is going to mean that they're not running the plus speed nature, but Sceptile gets absolutely destroyed by this head. And we're just out here spreading the good word that Rampardos will in fact eat your children. So they're down to one final Pokemon and it is going to be that Blastoise who, if you remember correctly, we did get some nice solid chip on this thing. And I don't care how badass and menacing you look Blastoise, nobody wants to be on the receiving end of a head smash. They do in fact go for the Terra here. It turns out it's actually, yeah, it's just gonna be the Water Terra. So they figure if I do potentially live, I can have insure enough damage to knock this thing out. Uh, but now he just looks ridiculous with his crazy fountain head, and a head smash just does end up knocking this thing out. So, that is going to be the match. Rampardo is coming in quite clutch with that choice scarf, and honestly, this thing, is, it literally just comes in and just clicks buttons. It doesn't have to do a lot. Head smash truly just does the rest. So, that is going to be the game. Thank you guys very much for watching. I do appreciate the support. If you guys enjoy, you know, kind of these, these longer videos where I have two matches, let me know, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.